Yeah, I'm going to have to make this uh, a little quicker here tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, um, again, another interesting day, as it always is on the draft. Um, you know, Stevenson, um, you know, big back from Oklahoma, uh, you know, hasn't had a lot of uh, carries. Uh, I think he's uh, certainly a player that's got a lot of good football in front of him. Um, kind of unusual to go back-to-back -back from Alabama and Oklahoma, but that's just the way it worked out. Uh, as always, really appreciate the uh, cooperation from uh, Coach Saban and uh, the University of Alabama staff, and the same thing at Oklahoma with Coach Riley and, and uh, his outstanding staff as well. Um, so uh, that that brought us to uh, McGrone. You know, McGrone is uh, you know good football player, replaced Bush at Michigan, uh, and had a you know really you know good career there. Um, had a knee injury last year, missed the end of the year. Um, uh, you know, our, we're not really sure what the availability is for him, but, you know, we we're prepared certainly to um, not have him available this year. But, you know, we'll just have to wait, have to wait and see how that goes. There are no false expectations here. Um, you know, he, he should have a good recovery and, and be a good player. Uh, we'll just have to see what the timing is on that. Um, you know, Bledsoe is a, a versatile player at, at Missouri, um, did a lot of different things for their football team. Uh, was in a couple different uh, system defensive or staffs out there. Uh, but, you know, through it all, is a very athletic player, high school quarterback, point guard, um, defensive safety, very, very instinctive player. Um, and then, uh, you know, Sherman, the tackle. Uh, has played both left and right tackle. Uh, also has some experience at guard, so we'll also see how all that plays out. But in 18, he played uh, left tackle, then moved to right tackle when they had a grad transfer come in, play left tackle, then he moved back to left tackle this year in 20. So left, right, left. Um, you know, Army, Army uh, football. Uh, so he. Um, uh, you know, again, we'll see how that goes. Um, certainly has some versatility and again maybe also able or suited to play guard we'll see how that goes and then uh trey nixon uh receiver from central florida um you know very productive guy uh, played opposite gabriel last year um you know played with harris who was drafted a little bit earlier uh this year but uh you know he's he's a guy who's had a you know productive career down there um and then I would say just to kind of wrap up the uh, the day, um, you know, uh, with Ernie Adams, uh, this you know was his last uh, draft, and certainly he's been a you know a huge part of um, the draft process with the New England Patriots, going all the way to Coach Fairbanks to the Giants to Cleveland to back to New England, and uh, the acquisition of a lot of great players, the all the process that goes into drafting. Um, Grading players, scouting players, setting up a grading scale, trading, um, really every single thing that is involved in that. Um, you know, Ernie's had that had that seat in that role and been a part of all those things in the draft room. So, um, you know, it's uh, as always was you know great to great to work with him. Um, you know, again over the weekend here. So uh, that's it's really. Quick week recap of where, where things are at. And, um, you know, we'll just take the free agency process with the undrafted players as it comes and see how that goes. And, uh, you know, just keep working through things. There's still a lot of work to be done. We certainly, you know, had players come to our team after the draft process was over. The, you know, David Andrews, JC Jackson, JJ Taylor, even go right down the line. There have been a lot of them. So uh, we'll continue to work through the. The, you know the draft uh, and rookie process now and um, you know try to improve the team in any way we can <laughs> and I only show three questions right now we might just cap it at that we're gonna start with Doug Kide followed by Andrew Callahan followed by Mike Reese Hi, Bill uh, on, uh, on McGrone I know that he didn't have a ton of experience at Michigan uh, came out early was his age uh, a decision or was that part of the process to take him just that young might have to take the year off but they kind of be coming in at 2022 at a normal age for a rookie 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the ages are getting getting younger all the time. Uh, well, <laughs> for the players, not the coaches. Uh, we just keep getting older. But um, and McGrone played a lot of football there. Um, you know, he there's there's plenty of football on McGrone, plenty of it against good competition as well. So um, I don't think his amount of uh, playing time is an issue. Um, but you know, unfortunately, he wasn't able to finish the year this year, and uh, we'll you know we'll just see where he is. But he's. He's been a productive player on a, you know, on a good defense that was, you know, well coached by uh, Coach Brown and, you know, played with Josh and Chase and, um, you know, plenty of other guys. Thomas was drafted. Pay was drafted. I mean, they've they got a lot of good football players there. So, you know, he was part of a really good group. Next question, Andrew Callahan, followed by Mike Reese. <laughs> Uh, two for me, Bill. Is Ernie retiring um, from all his responsibilities with the team? Yeah, well, I just want to, you know, uh, you know, give a, uh, you know, just give an opportunity here as we close out this draft to, you know, thank Ernie for all he's done and recognize all that he's done. So that's really what it is. Okay. And then with Stevenson, you're only carrying the ball 165 times in college, you know, at least at Oklahoma, drafting him in the fourth round, did that speak just to the power of what was obviously a very small sample of him that, that he was impressive in those snaps, whether it was running or in pass protection or even catching the ball? Uh, yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, of course, he was, uh, you know, all the circumstances that, that go with this, which is honestly becoming more and more common. But, you know, junior college, came to Oklahoma, played, uh, you know, then missed uh, whatever it was, five, six games, the last game of 19, and then the first however many games this year in 20. And so, uh, right, so uh, not not full, uh, not a full season, and also working in with uh, some of the other backs they had there, Brooks, Sermon, and so forth. So he's, you know, he's he's been a productive player in the opportunities that he's had. Uh, it's a little bit like Barmore. You know, Barmore's number of snaps were, um, maybe not as high as some other players, but certainly his production on a per snap basis was high, as was Stevenson. So, um, you know, we look forward to working with him. I think, think Stevenson's best football is in front of him. He's big, he can run, he can catch. Um, you know, he certainly is going to need a lot of work on some of the finer points. And uh, but that's you know that's what we're here for. And you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure that he'll he'll be ready to you know get to work and do it. Our next question, Mike Reese. Bill, can you, um, you mentioned how much it meant to you to work with Ernie. Uh, for those who wouldn't know, how would you characterize his contributions to the organization over the years? And given this um, news, is this the time to reveal what pink stripes meant after all these years, um, if you're familiar with that? Yeah, no, I'll pass on that one. Um, yeah, I think Ernie's contributions are, you know, historic. And, um, you know, again, they travel, they traverse several decades and in and, and so many different areas, I mean, into every corner of the room, um, and then some. So, you know, he's literally been involved in every single aspect uh, of the football program at, at every level that you could possibly be involved in. And, um, you know, has done an outstanding job in all of them, but you know, not not all coaches have the kind of involvement that that Ernie's had in the draft process throughout his career, and and uh, you know, his knowledge, experience, and um, uh, you know, decisions and organization, and um, you know, being part of the process and the way he set it up and uh, taught it to really all the people that have come through here, from Scott to Nick to you know, all the scouts and so forth. It's really, he's, he's had a big, big, big hand in it. Again, going back to the foundation of, you know, when it was laid in the, in the middle seventies with, um, you know, Bucko and, and, um, Chuck and so forth. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's on a, on a major level, but at some point he can, you know, talk more about that. All right. Thanks very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. To all those rookies waiting for that call tonight, I got a little piece of advice for you. 
Don't let anybody tell you that looks don't matter in this game. Because, baby, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, oh, you prime time good. NFL Draft, first round pick, Deion Sanders. Gillette, baby, the best a man can get. Come on. Opponents, I've gone up against thousands. And there's an opponent we're all up against, COVID-19. But there's a way to beat it. Get vaccinated. So when it's your turn, roll up your sleeves. And let's get to the finish line, together. When did Bud Light Seltzer start making lemonade? Probably when 2020 handed us all those lemons. <laughs> New Bud Light Seltzer Lemonade, packed with lemonade flavor after a lemon of a year. The first ever virtual NFL draft is officially open. Is waiting for that call tonight. I got a little piece of advice for you. Don't let anybody tell you that looks don't matter in this game. Because, baby, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, oh, you prime time good. 